corner, please. And everyone's here. Wonderful. Great. Um, now you all received the minutes from Mary. May I have a motion to approve the minutes as emailed? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Tom. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see everybody. Uh, first thing I'm doing is construction project updates. Uh, I just kind of want to go over some things from 2021 initially, but it's kind of some carryover projects into 2022. Uh, St. Vincent uh, Community Center and African Community Center roof replacement projects. I talked about this a little bit in November. Uh, they were awarded to staff. Um, staff has done other work on some of our historic buildings. Currently, we're being told that the lead time our materials could be long for the St. Vincent Community Center. They're actually talking a start date of late summer or early fall of this year to start the project. Yeah, it is uh, still under a ton of silence because uh, the contract's being signed to the project of being there. So uh, <coughs> there's a pre bid meeting uh, coming up here uh, soon uh, once that's done. Uh, the Mathilda Park restroom, Missouri American Water tap, that was supposed to occur this week. I don't know if it occurred because of the cold weather, it was going to be yesterday or today. They might, they might get delayed for another couple of days. But the good news is here, the water can't turn on to the spring opening. Uh, if you recall, the prefab unit, some of you saw it pre uh, after our meeting there at the main. This is another one of those units there in the building. And that's a small neighborhood of Park in South County. Uh, Nims Mansion Roof Replacement. Um, there's a design contract for that that's just starting right now. Uh, Green Children Park, some have been out there for some different uh, functions. The ribbon cutting, uh, we recently did a thing for A. Phillips there as well. Uh, that room, the parking lot there, the design is completed, and permits are being sought from Wildwood. Uh, those were submitted to them in the summer. Uh, three to four wetlands. We got final closeout uh, documents done there for the construction. There is a contract for five years for monitoring and reporting with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, the Door Park Restroom and the North County Rec Center parking lot both are in design right now with a 2023 construction project schedule. Uh, the Susan Salt Storage Shed, we received approval from Amber and Eugene. We were the power lines there in Susan Park. This was the last outstanding item for the permits. Um, that the in house project we can proceed with here. Some of the upcoming 2022 projects, the highlights um, Jefferson Barracks will look at connecting the maintenance building at 533 uh, grant to the MSB, and I have to be prepared for that. 3 and 4, uh, we'll be looking at preparing the sailboat cove seawalls, and RFP will be posted this month. Branch Trail will be placing two bridges and culverts there, and IMP is being prepared. We would call GRG to be resigned for that, and we're following on the construction. Uh, so let's, uh, we're going to renovate the four tennis sports there. Our previous coat will be posted in February next month. The North County Rec Center Playground, the design is complete, and we're getting ready for bid to go out here shortly for 2022 replacement. Olandor, uh, Kennedy, Endicott, and King are looking at the replacing the surfacing on the playgrounds there, the river and surfacing that will be near turning in spring of 2022. Um, North County Rec Center, um, we're going to replace the BMP behind the pool. The ISD is being prepared for that. Uh, parking lot overlays and resurfacing projects are going to occur in three core, Queen, Spanish Lake, and Hunger, and those are all in the design. And I know one of the projects we've asked about before, the loan out sinkhole repair for the grabbing of the sinkhole, uh, the contract is being routed for signatures right now. Uh, so that will occur just from the Wait, say that one again. The grabbing of the oh, sinkhole. Okay, so we're going to grab. Loan out time. Loan out time. Loan out time. Yeah. Grab. Sinkhole is okay. Yeah. Not a liner. It's just going to be. Grabbing like it was uh, five, six years ago. Okay. That was the major, you know, kind of an overview of the things going on. A lot going on this year. It's, it's a good year. We're back to two million plus in uh, capital construction projects for 2022. That seems like a lot of projects, but it's not for only two million dollars. Um, depends on, you know, some of those are bad. Right. Yeah. I doubt. Right. Yeah. Would you say that, uh, oh, like a parking lot is in design? Are we able to do that in house? Within house staff, or do we have to we, contract? We contract. Okay. And we've kind of gotten into a mode where we design one year and build the next on, on something. Um, so 
like when you heard me talk about the door restroom, that uh -huh. we designed the sewer construction. Okay, but we don't have staff in house engineers or. We do, but it's, we found it's better, it's easier just to get that inside. Okay. Done and then, yeah, because they it's a small staff, staff is for having the manager and between that and project management. Okay. Things that are required in the day with diversity and things like that. It's a point. Okay. I would think, Darren, um, leading up to that, there'd be some I would say cooperation with highways. Transportation would have that engineering staff that help other departments like parks and new such and such a thing. So they're working on their own projects as well. That's true. But I, we used to do that in St. Charles County, what you said. They build us. Right. Yeah. But it's kind of a feel good build because at least going to another department in town. Yeah. Right. We did work with them last summer with an asphalt project up in Spanish Lake Park. They did use the over the, the asphalt overlay for the uh, land and water spray the project up at Manny Bronco Shelter. And we did get built for that as well. So it's something I'll keep in mind I'm going to talk to them. Yeah, but like you said, we all we always got pushed back too because they got their own products. Right. So Catch them at a good time. They, they charge us actually the same amount of money to be able to pay the contractor. But it, it, it was really good to walk. That's why. In time. What was the three bin game for? Sorry. Um, <coughs> it was in the first page. Was that something I mentioned earlier? Yeah. First page, you said there will be three bin games for projects. Is right, right around the afternoon, St. Vincent Rouge to all. I talked about the Philma Park restroom, the Garden Mansion Group replacement. The design contract is just starting on that. Uh, permits are being sought from Wildwood on the Forby Road parking lot. The wetlands um, done with a five year monitoring contract. <laughs> Yeah, we had a pre bid meeting. Last week, I thought you mentioned something about pre bid meeting in the first couple of months. Last last pre bid meeting, we had a little bit of a problem. I'm not seeing that. I heard it wrong. The, uh, the uh, roof for the mansion, the men's mansion. That's going to be kind of technical, right? I mean, it's going to be a specialized that's, project. That's a slate room. Yeah. And if you would call it the multicolored slate room up there, not just the gray slate. So, because there's not a lot of roofing down there. It would be slate. A lot of annuals on that room. I can see this. Yes. That's a right. fairly large building as well. Um, if you're looking for contractors, I know Tarville Park is also doing a slate for a bit. Okay. And they're at the process now uh, getting up uh, or drawing up construction maps. Okay. So Bill would be able to. I know. If you need, need, need our contractor. You did uh, Bruce and Jefferson Barracks a few years ago to put this replacement for 20 Hancock and 533, and I know they hired a company then, and we did a repair to them about a decade ago. Um, with a different company here. So, okay. We haven't seen to have problems getting in the Yeah, uh, there's just not many. And I've been trying to prove there's yeah. not many. Right. We have been two or three different companies. You know what? I can find out. I'll just forward it to you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Greensville, the rec center, um, I have to done a supply by itself just because it's for the vastness of that project. Um, the rain floor there has been repaired and the concrete deck poured. Um, the K wall is the opaque windows that are in the rink at the top near the ceiling. Um, we're expecting delivery on those windows in February. That's going to take about a four week installation. Uh, the siding on the exterior, the material is in town, um, and it should go up on the outside of the building here starting in the next couple of weeks. I think that's going to be the number one thing you're really going to see visually. Uh, from this project is the new exterior of the building, that and the bump out to the locker rooms towards the closet area. Um, there's a painting going on in the interior right now. Uh, the storefront windows and doors right there by the front door are ordered. 
Uh, I guess still, you know, where do you think we're at as far as percent completed of the project? She's putting it at about 60% right now. Um, so we should be still looking at a spring drilling cutting. Any plans? Um, 2022 budget, uh, kind of go over some of the highlights just again. I, I kind of touched on this a little bit, but we have a 35.4 million dollar budget, two plus million dollars for capital construction, 1.5 million for capital equipment. Um, there is a performance management increase for staff in there. Uh, more details are going to come out of the uh, uh, personnel office about that. Uh, Prop C and Prop D sales tax revenues for 2021 uh, were higher than the 2019 revenues pre COVID times. Um, we're looking at about 11.5 million combined for both of them, uh, which is good. We don't have the December revenues yet, but we should give you those in February. But right now it's tracking really well. Um, and our program revenues, I can have to say for 2021, exceeded 5.5 million. And that, that's a record for us. Um, a, good, a, a good portion of that was put in one million revenues um, that have been uh, in the month of the summer. But again, the 2019 department revenues were 5.1, so we were about 400 k higher. Uh, the department did really well this year as far as people coming out to the parks, um, coming to the facilities, building the shelters. Um, yeah, people were ready to return. Uh, staff maintenance. Um, our maintenance driver series is still experiencing a lack of applications. Um, seven out of nine positions are vacant. The asphalt crew is down to two members right now, um, and then we're dealing with the rest of the grading crew supervisor. Uh, we just hired two new direct supervisors and promoted two people in the complex management positions at the active community center and the civilian agreement. Uh, we have introduced the rangers next month. Um, we've got two new positions in the budget. Uh, some promotions created, some vacancies as well. Um, we've got a total of five new people. We are having a total of five new majors because we've got 31 applicants for those positions, so we've got a good response to that. How many people are, you said there's two people on the asphalt crew. How many people are normally? Nine. Nine? nine seven vacancies on the asphalt And uh, yeah, we're having a hard time getting applicants for that job soon. And so is transportation. Well, what does that pay? 15, 17? Um, I want to say 17. So we did, yeah, we did a bump up in May of 2021, and we got one one response in transportation. We had <laughs> so in the fall, we did another bump uh, went through the Civil Service Commission, and it, it really hasn't resulted in any gains for either department. So, I thought you said the last thing. If you if you're a driver, you get paid a little more too, right? Well, you have a CDL. We're hiring drivers, but if you don't have your CDL, we'll hire you as a maintenance worker one, which starts at fifteen dollars an hour. Okay. And then when you get your CDL, then you get bumped up to the right. I think it starts at eighteen. I know well, it's a series of maintenance driver one, even so I want to say they start in the seventeen range and go up. Okay. Um, the county's going to host a job fair on March 15th for all departments. Um, we're sending staff to represent our department. Um, I was asked last month about the CDL at Lewis Community College. I know Mary even mentioned that. I went to look online and looked at it. It is a program at Forest Park. It's for a Class A license for over the road truck drivers. The cost was $5,750 for a 200 hour class. And uh, there was two other, I think we had, there was two other things associated with two that had minor fees of under a hundred dollar fee. Uh, so, that, you know, it's for a class A, we hired for class B and C. So it was something a little bit different. <laughs> and then the, the budget, and I can talk about this the budget here in, in November 12th, but the county's looking at doing a pay study for 2022 plus two. To look where the issues are and zero in on some of these job taxes. Questions? Um, um, I got a question. How many full time managers? Um, like 20, 24, but then we had the two new positions. Okay. Two new full time positions came for one. And then how many part time? Roughly. Well, that, that, that went down. That's probably okay. down to two or three. 
Oh, is that right? That's all. Yeah. Okay. Because we've been having a hard time filling those in right. as well. So okay. we're, we're trying something a little bit different. We uh, eliminate, we eliminated four part time to create two full time. Good. Okay. So, okay. so we've got a lot of schedules. Good. Are we short on rankings, too? Are we short on them, too? No. We, we had 31 applicants for those five positions. So you're doing okay. Now, they're, are they commissioned? They're not commissioned. Okay. They do go through a training. Uh, Winter Wonderland stats. Um, so we're still in the process of taking down Winter Wonderland right now. But I'll give you some of the stats for then, you know, be my own closeout. But uh, vehicles, we had 18,501 vehicles, 105 limos, 37 vans, and nine bottles. We had uh, carriages of uh, we had sold tickets for 21,301 people, and the walk we sold 24,100 tickets. The walk was sold out. So, um, final numbers are not in, uh, I'll tell you that. So, for gross, and we probably got more to my question, you like to know about too. Uh, we did really well, we grossed about 945K. However, our, some of our expenses were up too, like lights, LED lights were up, and uh, some of the other costs, and we're still taking it down. So uh, the reason for the increase too, we went from $10 to $15 per car this year, and uh, the carriage prices went up this year as well. So, and they have been the previous prices for some time. Yes. And they needed to go up. Yes. Based on say that. Especially the vehicle. Yeah, based on other areas. Right. We're still, um, we're still cheap. It's different. Yeah, we went through one of the $5 rather than, you know, going from 10 to 20. Yeah. 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 I think one of the biggest differences this year was the LED lights. The yeah. display was a lot brighter overall. Yeah. And they did a phenomenal job on the gate and the fence yeah. along Litzinger and McKnight. And it needed to be, was eye appealing to anybody going by. When we were there for the park station, it was gorgeous. It really was. Yeah. I, I told you that, and I thought it was the best thing. Mm -hmm. Were there any traffic uh, headaches? No. And uh, realize, and that's a good thing, last year we couldn't do the walk because of COVID, and we had to eliminate the large trolleys last year because of COVID. So last year the vehicles were 29,000, and it backed up a lot. So this year, being able to increase the walk numbers and having the carriages back in full swing, the numbers for the cars went down to where we like them. Okay. And the, the complaints and things from they I gotta say the neighbors were very great last year because uh, I think they realized the impacts of COVID we have in the community and you know, they tolerate it. Yeah. But um, the numbers for the people were really right. Sure. Sure. So the night we went, highway the exit of highway north west. Yeah. Was mm -hmm. You mean going east? Going east, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. and, and that, coming that, from the west. Yeah, it's not uncommon, especially like you get close to the Christmas week because it'll back down, it'll back down the ramp and they're trying to prevent that from happening so there's no action. Yes, but then after we went, there was no one on. I think it's once they get a little bit, people get the idea and they just, you know. Okay. It takes them a while for the police to open it back up. Yeah, okay. and, and by that time, I think the big initial rush is over. And it's still good people get it long. So I went for the Monday of Christmas week, and the ranch was closed, like you're saying, and I got in line at the top of the hill. Uh, the longer set down, down the woods and park entrance, but it, it still moved fairly quick. It moved very quickly. It wasn't that long, is what I'm saying. Right. And this was after Christmas, if I'm speaking. Monday after Christmas. But it moved quickly. It, yeah. I'm going to say it took us maybe an hour to get through from the time we got the line to the time we reached the park. Um, 
The fee proposal, I talked about this in November a little bit. The fee ordinance, uh, the proposed changes was approved by the county council in December. So those new prices are in effect. Um, Brian is a big, uh, the guy that helped me run with this, um, mostly in effect the meeting room, advertising, and now himself firewood in our case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Recommendation updates. Are the fees competitive? Like the happy rate, like the other rates, like are cheaper or competitive? So, like school does compared to Denver Field, you know, I think the fees competitive. We try, we try to stay in the middle. You know, with uh, a lot of our fees, we'll do some research and see what others are charging. When we go back, when we go in for a fee ordinance increase, a lot of times if we select, you know, we'll look at what the market's doing, yeah. how for certain things, and then we'll select, you know, it might be 10 or 12 things, it might be more. Um, we try to go down there about every other year, and uh, just so we do stay current with yeah. fees. And all the things are done here, you know, yeah, or happy fees on there, there's a lot of movies on that kind of stuff. And get serious and fear I don't know that we'll get more, but we hope to get the ones returned yeah. that we used it before. Mid State Talking was a big user, and they, they, they played out at Kennedy as well. Mid State Talking will probably start putting the bigger schools that get in the park because before we would have two locker rooms, they wouldn't put like of Yanni and the Smet in there because the, the locker rooms are too small. But now they'll probably bring them in those, those four locker rooms so they'll be able to bring them in. Wait, they fight the locker rooms. <laughs> yeah, questions? Park Foundation updates. Um, they got a grant for $10,000 for the family trail at Freeport Park in December. Uh, we received fifteen thousand dollars from Amber and Uni for Kinlock Park, and right now we're working with them a little bit. Uh, they're in the process of applying for an RTP grant, which is Recreation Trails Program grant for Kinlock Park, which has got a deadline of next month. Uh, COVID nineteen updates. I will tell you we had more staff out with COVID since the holidays. Um, we had seventeen out the week before. <laughs> Uh, 10 this week, um, the impacts have been somewhat, uh, the impacts have been somewhat uh, impactful to us as far as several of our rec complexes. Um, we did move one of our managers around and help cover uh, the guy that would be in GRC because that's down right now. We moved him around a couple different locations. Um, it is slow going on and take down the ground crew there has been affected a little bit. Um, we kept it going with the uh, area lifts because we got a new date that we got done with. The mass assignments have been placed at all of our facilities. Um, so we're doing okay with that. Um, spring summer activity guide be prepped for regular activities at this time for the spring summer. Um, and that's, uh, that's that'll be out in March. We're holding our own. Um, it seems like we got over the hump though earlier this month and more people are returning back in there. Uh, Jordan House, uh, I want to thank you for those of you who went on the tour in uh, December down at Rain Tree. Um, Diana Rillis, do you want to share your impressions? Yes, I and again, those who did not go, it was an amazing experience. I, uh, I found it to be quite an interesting. Very interesting school. Uh, and that the children really help determine what their curriculum is. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, it was a kindergarten class, I believe, that <laughs> saw a deer with three legs. And so their first decision was that they were going to make a look for the deer. Well, obviously, the, the staff, the teachers knew. That they could not make a leg for the deer, but they worked on the principle of letting the children try and fail. Because I asked the question, does everyone get a trophy for participation? The answer was absolutely not. So 
they work on that theory of letting your children try this. Well, obviously the children realized they could not make the way. So then what could they do? And this project went on for I think two or three years. And, and some of the children had even left and came back to work on this project. Uh, they decided that perhaps that the, the deer had lost the way from the track accident. So they went to the town and country city council and petitioned them for signs to put up to say slow down and a bounce sort of thing. So these are the kinds of projects that the children have. There is no playground equipment. They play on the natural services. Okay? And they learn from those natural services. Most of their time is spent outside. Probably today, they were out for a brief time in the middle. And I don't remember the temperature. The temperature had to be very low, or and I think over 100 for them not to be outside. It, it was really very interesting. Uh, the methodologies that they use, the theories that they use, it really does encourage children to be exceptional thinkers, to work together and try to solve things. It, would be amazed when you were in the classrooms. There were not computers. There were not screens. That's not what they did. They learned by going outside, discovering things, becoming a part of the setting. So I was thoroughly impressed with the man. Yes, it's very expensive, uh, but I was thoroughly impressed with him and his staff. We had a uh, person who's on staff but it was also a parent. She was a parent first, and then she became a staff with them. So I think it is an amazing school. I think they teach children extremely well, and the only issue that they seem to have is when the children leave there, where can they go that can maintain that same sort of, of teaching technique? So that becomes an issue, and that's why he's trying to expand to raise the grades and go forward. Uh, he was very excited about the office and really wanted to be there. And I did say, do you realize it's going to cost some money to update it to what? Because this building is magnificent that we're in. And he understands, but really wants to be there. So I was impressed by it. I thought it was an excellent school. Uh, and I did not walk in there with any preconceived ideas. Uh, and he walked away saying, wow, this is this really is what we should be doing for students. I understand it's not possible to do it in the public school and even in private schools uh, because of their, their number of parents are from teacher and children ratio, et cetera. But it certainly is amazing. But who else was out of the area you were there? Michael was there, I think. Yeah. And I was there. Guys, I have anything you want to add on to anything that Diane said? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely, absolutely right. right. Very. Oh, yeah. Interesting goals. A lot of the stuff in the classrooms came in from outside, not everything, but a lot of stuff from the outside was brought into the classroom to make everything school. But they're still getting reading and math and yeah. that, you know, the, the basics. Yes, but in a different way. And in, in that they're encouraged by what they're doing outside to think outside the box, but yes, they still get the basics that they need to have, but understand that some of these children are three years old, okay? So they're getting a head start on this because some of them are starting there before most children are in school there. They can have preschool or a day there, but nothing like this where they are, they're learning. I, I think the advantages that are there for these children far outweigh any of the basics that may, well, I think they do get the basics, but it far outweighs that. Unfortunately, there's not a high school to that, that carry on. That was his, his issue, that there's no place to go. <laughs> we have to go 
because even some of the boroughs and, and others that are excellent, obviously, private schools, they're not based on this philosophy. Because I can only imagine as a small child going through that school and then going even to like a would do high school would be like getting sent to the workhouse or something. You know? <laughs> That's an interesting thing. I was I noticed that there were child sized mops and things around. If you spill it, you clean it up. Right? Uh, nobody cleans it up for you. They will show you how and, and assist you, but you make a mess, you clean up the mess. I did ask the question. Does this continue at home? Because if they only get it while they're in school and they don't when they're at home, then it kind of defeats it. Well, apparently most parents who, again, spend the kind of money they spend to have their children have this type of education are willing to follow through because they don't want to be counterproductive to what's happening in school. So, and, and I think that's great. You make a mess. You, Played it up, and, and again, I, if you can tell, I'm very anti-participation service. You know, I think people need to. You, know, you have to learn in this world, I believe, how to succeed and how to fail. Everybody gets a participation trophy then. So I, I was very encouraged, very impressed by his philosophy. <laughs> I don't think there are any rulers in Bali. I remember not being, I began French in seventh grade and we could not speak French with a southern accent. Or the, the ruler kept banging down on the desk and spoke French with a southern accent. That's just Cajun, isn't it? <laughs> That's just Cajun, though. Oh, it's just Cajun. I, I think the best way to sum it up, they're taught how to think to solve problems. And I think that, you know, which is something sadly lacking in uh, our traditional <laughs> public schools. But, uh, it's not just rote. Right. It's not just sitting down, okay, A, B, C. It's okay if there's A and you need to get to G, then what do you have to do to get from A to G? And you figure it out. We'll help you, but you figure it out. And I just found it fascinating that the children, in some ways, determine their own curriculum by the things they interest in, the things they find outside. You want to, you want to play with the truck? Make a truck. Yeah. And there are those kinds of things to allow them to make those, make a truck, or make, but not there weren't toys and and like in regular preschool, you would see. The, the poppy thing that you roll along and pops up, or you know, any of those things that you normally see in the high school, they weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What? Yeah. It's the problem with standardized testing. Yes. You, you know, that's there's no, this is all subject, but yes, teachers are not allowed to deviate because it all has to be back to the test. Yeah, they can't combine if my wife is a teacher, you know, like with football, you can't do statistics and other things along with sports uh, to make it more fun. Well, and here, deviation is the rule rather than the exception. That's fine. No, thank you. So, to follow up with a few other things, so this is going to be called Proposition B. Is a dog. Dog. Yep, and it'll be on the April 5th ballot. It passed the council in December. Um, personally, we think it's going to be a good fit. Be in a far school, have a cleaning park, you know, 569 acres of the outdoor playground without language to develop. Um, Brian and I met with our marketing person, and we're developing some speaking points. Uh, that'll be great. We hope to get it on our website, but I'll also get that. Distributed out to all of you as well. I, I, and I, I spoke with Tom a little bit about what we can do. And once the speaking points are available, available for us to see and cover, uh, I would like for each of us to read them 
and then talk to our friends. I've already started talking to some friends about how impressed I was with this and how I think it would be certainly a good fit and how to benefit the parts. Journal has pizza. I mean, you know, several of us were here at that meeting and toured and, and much work needs to be done there. This would benefit us as well as benefit the school and the children, et cetera. Uh, but if we can take those talking points, and you all know in St. Louis, it's a small world. So you know, we've talked to this person, we've talked to that person, we've talked to that person. And even though it only seems it's the people, it begins to build up. So I really would like to see us just spend time, not, not anything formal, but just talking to our friends. I mean, why would anybody vote against them? What would be their motivation? <laughs> Anti-government, yeah. yeah, but yeah. still, that's four million. Just because people go through some time and, and just start voting no, just because they don't know what it is. That is, I mean, yeah. The those, those kind of people, we're not going to reach. I don't. Yeah, right. And I will say the ballot language is good. Yeah. Crafted by okay. the attorneys. Um, it's not confusing. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. We had one resident reach out to us like two weeks ago, asked us some questions on the in the park ordinance. We answered them. He replied back, Thank you. I, I like this. You know, he, he knew he even mentioned three four with Rick that had some concern to know what was happening between, but I think right. we answered his questions. Uh, he was, he had a very positive response to that. Well, my point about talking to people as we can. Then it is because somebody read, doesn't know anything about it. They read through it and think, oh, this isn't important. I just vote no. But the more people that we get to understand that it is important. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Now, they do, they do go to Jarvis and all that. Do they pay for any renovations in the house or does the town vote? No, that's. On their phone, as uh, far as believe yeah. that they would be they responsible for not just the rent, but maintaining the facility. That means roofs, HVAC, you know, windows. So they're not, they're not, I mean, park lines to knock down walls and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, no. Yeah. 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 Any work that is done there is going to be approved by the house. And he's already had an architect there to look at who's worked on historic buildings before. Oh, cool. Uh, I all that is being discussed prior. We've yeah. also talked to the Senior Historic Building Commission about this project as well. And they're okay. Uh, I think you left the room when I said I asked him oh, to realize how much work had to be done. And his answer was yes, but I want to go. And yeah. I think his contacts are Oh, I think. We did, we did approach HBC, you guys, uh, Open Space Council, um, Missouri Coalition for the Environment, and Serving Chief Town. Yeah, Town of Country. I've got a whole list of people we reached out to, and everybody's okay. Nobody's just <laughs> crazy. I mean, they've asked questions, but at the end, they're all, they're all for it. That's why that ballot language head is key. Yes. yes. Oh, always. I'd, I'd be willing to bet, too, that. When they uh, when they make the move and they sell their existing facilities, they should get enough to sell uh, some of the big renovation. That's a gorgeous oh, and the facility. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Diane. Um, LWCF grant. Uh, we are working on applying for an LWCF grant right now for five hundred thousand dollars for Pinlock Park. Uh, team of staff working on that. Uh, it is a matching one for one grant. Uh, we, if, if we are approved awarded, it would be not be for the fall of twenty twenty two for the notification. Uh, this would be something an item in the twenty twenty three budget. Um, but one million to renovate the majority of that park. And as I mentioned, the park foundation also applying for an RTG grant, same park. Um, and uh, the park foundation's raised about forty to fifty thousand dollars for ten lot park right now, which can be used as part of the grant. So that that's a nice thing. And they're still working on raising. Um, I do have one add-on. Um, 
the deer hunt. Um, so we received the deer hunt numbers earlier this month. Um, good news, the deer numbers, the harvest numbers went up from last year. Uh, green forest stayed the same at 31. Green smell would jump from, I think it was 22 last year to 33 this year. Jefferson Barracks went up by one to 64. And Queen went up, uh, I think, by six or seven to 37. We have a total of 165 year marks in, in the month of November. It was a successful hunt with no major, with no major incidents. We have our follow up meetings uh, with MDC tomorrow night. Yeah, with Aaron. Well, they're in chance there. So. Are we like right on track? Are we like right on track with harvest to herd numbers, or do we want more? Or? Uh, you know, I think they're looking at anything that's reduced is a good thing. Um, you know, Aaron said that actually these are really great numbers for the green hunts last year and this year. Um, it's not uncommon for managed hunts to have uh, lower percentages, um, but we're up to like in the 30 plus percent time um, for harvest at the So, But the, the number that can be harvested is large, much larger than. Oh, yeah, you've got uh, 30 hunters in each park of 30 deer each. Or, I mean, three deer each, that's 90 deer per park, so there's a potential of 360 deer that you harvest. And 160, what did I say, 165 for the harvest So, cool. Nothing went down in numbers. One stayed the same, everybody else, <coughs> everybody else went up. Yeah, there's an albino floating rock. There's an albino one floating rock in four parts. There's no what? Albino. Oh, oh. there is one? Yes. Oh, really? And we haven't heard, I don't think we've heard that. Yeah. Oh, there was one a few years ago out by West Tyson. I was in our subdivision from that store to see. Well, it's a picture of it. Very good. I didn't hear anything about it, you know, getting harvested or anything. Yeah. I'll we'll we'll mention that to Aaron tomorrow. We're also talking, we're going to talk about maybe adjusting the hunt next year. Say it's still say 30 days, but we will do it early. So, so it doesn't affect our staffing for like one and then we, we lose all the range, not all the range, we lose a lot of range to the hunt. And, and they said once the rifle hunts, they're, they're not <laughs> and, and once, once the rifle season gets here, you're losing hunters to go elsewhere, they're not here, so it's only the park. So yeah, you could go mid no mid October to mid November it might, might help with the numbers too. Well we put a salt lick out there for me. Scared the fact about that. <laughs> Food go, go baby. Yeah. Is there any type of major about money kind of thing with tagging on that and taking the kind of there? Is there any conservation about the deer hunting thing? Are they allowed at all with Oh yes, they're it's their program. Their program. Yeah. 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 I'm not here, but you can check them in all So what they'll do is they'll emphasize the hunts in their magazine, their publication. Not not the Missouri conservation, but they have a, a special hunt publication that'll come out like in the spring. Hunters apply, I think it's by July 1st, and then it's a lottery system and MDC manages all of that. Plus they have an agent that We'll check in on these parks too during the month. And they have to check it. when you when you take a deer, you have to take a, a non-antler deer first, and then you have to they can check it with their phone. They don't have to go someplace. Right. They can just check it with their phone and then they can take it. Yeah, they don't you don't yeah. have to it's all statewide, yeah. it's just kind of checking them. Any questions? That new business over discussion. I know Mike, you have Mike and you have uh Airlines Department facility. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what can I mean, there there are a couple things about that that, that really concern me. One is the potential for uh, traffic in the, uh, the main part of the park. That that scares the living, you know, what happened. Uh, but there's also sort of stormwater remediation 
that host of other, and, and now I understand they want to be able to connect to the trails around before they, which would entail going over the railroad line. Red line is going to be used more because they're building a, an auto transfer facility down the line of water by the summer. I don't know if, if we, you know, if, if the county has a uh, position or you know, dog in the fight, as it were. So uh, it's within the city of Maryland Heights. They would have to go through them for their zoning and, and approval. I would say that. Um, as far as, uh, you know, connecting to the trail, we have to see what their design is and what it entails. I will tell you. At Jefferson Barracks, we've got the trailhead there, uh, and it connects up to the Mississippi River Greenway there that goes north up to the casino. That's like a long ramp that goes over a couple of railroad lines there. So it, it, it can be done. It just you have to wait and see what the proposed use is. I did see an article in the business, I think it was a business journal a couple of weeks ago about the proposed apartment complex facility. Um, it's there, everybody knows where golf court is being proposed where, where the golf court right there, location currently is across the court court. So we, we did big comments on it. We got the preliminary drawings two months ago, maybe a month ago, and we made comments. They had, uh, we had expressed uh, concern about the connections because they're going to have a big detention basin between. The, their facility and the railroad tracks in the park. Um, they had like boardwalks going across the detention basin to the park. And we said that there, we, would, we would not be for connections to the park, especially across the railroad tracks without like uh, yeah. pedestrian crossings. So that's kind of the, the railroad tracks are kind of going to save us because they won't be able to go across the railroad tracks. So that'll save us. We made other comments about. Um, the way that their storm water was going to be diverted, but we didn't want it into the park. And eventually, uh, there's going to be uh, conveyances to uh, the, the, the yeah. levee, get over to the Howard Bend Levee District to get over the, the, the levee. Um, the other concerns were sidewalks along uh, 141 and Creekport Mill Road. Uh, they took all of our concerns in, into consideration. The last drawing just came out yesterday. Uh, nothing's been approved yet. They're still in the through process, and they still have one uh, connection across the detention basin, across the road tracks into the park. But you know that's not going to be. It's not going to be a bridge. A bridge. Yeah. If I could change the, city, the city of Maryland Heights would bless them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like like I said, probably my primary concern: what traffic is going to be, what traffic's going to do. To the park because you no, know, uh, Maryland Heights will say, Oh, well, the Maryland Heights Expressway is right there, and that's true. But to get any to get from that site to any kind of restaurant, commercial, whatever, chances are they're going to be driving to the park and then going to Dorset. Uh, well, and some people may move there because of the park, they get there, some, some may, yeah. right? I mean, I would expect to see increased in participation for that. The, the drawing I saw had the entrance to the facility coming right off of the uh, one twenty one. How many units are in this? I told you it was Any it's ideas? Four or five phases in this. One building, multiple phases. Well, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking I'm thinking one person phase. I guess not. Okay. There's one big building, and then uh, there's one phase, and then others like villa type. Like, are they tall? One of them is way tall. Okay, did, did we weigh in on that as far as aesthetics or anything like that? So our patrons are not going to be looking at tall buildings. And I don't think we can really, I mean, aesthetics is it's not our problem. Yeah, not in way, but it could impact the visitor experience. You're, you're going to see more development down there. Yeah. Brian, these are sort of garden type apartments and mid rise of high rise buildings as opposed to the type apartments. I, I, I always saw like 
you know, one day drawing, I can't tell you how tall they are. Right. Yeah. And they look like right those. Yeah, they're kind of a, they're really big. There was a, there, in the visit journal, there was a good drawing of it. And if you go to, I'm sure, the city of New York, I can go to Okay, it's more like an apartment building. As one, a, there's going to be one big building, and then, like I guess, other smaller buildings around. But it's multiple phases. It wasn't like they're going to build it all at once. They are taking our comments, so that that's the good stuff. Yeah, so I can do that. Right? Is there anything else um, that we want to ask Brian or Tom or anything else we want to bring up? Next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the next meeting that you don't like because it's said Patrick Stan. Okay. What does uh let's look at the calendars and then see what we might do. I saw that when I put that on there like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next meeting is supposed to be March uh, 17th. Okay, is a different Thursday okay? Uh, is do you prefer a different a day that week or do you want a different Thursday? We don't want Monday. You want to go to the 24th? Following week. Thursday, March 24th, okay? Yeah. At 4.30. So you're against the, uh, 7 a.m. on the 18th. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> We're <rough. laughs> Okay, and Tom, I, I would request if we could have somewhere in this area only because I have another meeting that we're probably not in in three. And so I will need to get there. And if we're far away, it's difficult for me to get somewhere by four thirty. Central, so, so central, yeah. yeah right. So that I can get I mean this is perfect. I'll put it here somewhere that I can sure. get to well maybe by March twenty fourth, maybe it'll be something that you're seeing yeah, I was thinking about that. I don't know. I wouldn't promise that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know probably until I could right. be before. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So our next meeting will be Thursday, March 24th at 4.30 p.m. Anything else anyone wants to have a wonderful set back? Are you inviting all of this? No. Okay. Anything else? Are you uh, taking bookings? You're not taking bookings for uh, GRC at this point. Like into the summer, maybe, or are you, well, is everything on hold? Or are you booking the facility? We are booking the start of the June first because okay. a lot of things are they're, they're scheduling for the uh, arena. Some of the shows that they've typically done. Okay. We just we were originally going for like April first. And it was just too risky to. You got it, yeah. We didn't want to cancel people. It's easier just to. Right. It's almost not available. But June first, you got a comfort level. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> the only, only thing that's kind of right now is the uh, the storefronts for the front of the building. They say that you know there's like a twelve or thirteen week lead time on, but then they say something, then stuff shows up. Oh. So it's like we're right. hoping it just shows up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's always tricky when you're doing a major project. He told me that those items should should be there in the next couple of weeks. So I have to think about that earlier. Was your plan to redo the playground there? We need so the park foundation is looking at that as a potential project down the road. Right now, their focus has been on Kinloch. Okay, yeah. So they kind of pick a project in the north, west, and south. So north is Finlock, west is the Quinn Playground, and south is Nims Main. That part, that playground does need to be. Oh yeah. But there was an article. <laughs> that's the old today. I said the top 15 or 20 playgrounds. Yeah, that was the top 20 playgrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The so, pyramids in there, people don't want those pyramids to go away. But it's the surface. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of open space there right now. We're just saying that you enjoyed them from being out there and playing in the house. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have childhood memories from that. Oh, Kennedy used to be like that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Just to the right of the building there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's big, is it? It's yeah. too similar. And graduations in. The ice rink and the parkway is oh, yeah. in there. Well, it's there. Oh, yes, all sorts of things. Yeah. Art, the art fair is there. Science fair. Yes. Mm -hmm. sorts of yeah, you know, the there are a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. Okay, well, if we have nothing else, then may I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. 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 Favor. Okay. Thank you, Mary and Tom and Ryan. Nice. Yes. Yes. Hey, are they uh, are they taking reservations yet for uh